Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a tag video. I'm so excited. I freaking love tag videos. And I want to say a huge thank you to Kat from Rented Fashion for tagging me in this video. She's so sweet. I was planning on doing this video anyway, but it feels so much better when your friends ask you to film it. So thank you girl. She's great. I'm going to go ahead and link her channel probably up in the cards because that's the easiest place to find it. Um, but yeah, she's awesome. Check her out. She is fabulous. So I'm going to leave who I'm tagging in the description box because I feel like that always ends up being the easiest. Um, just so you don't forget <laughs> to tag people. I'm so bad at like repeating names off the top of my head. So if you're one of my YouTube friends, definitely check the box down below because you're probably tagged in this video. And if I forget, I do apologize. Definitely make this video. Let me know that you made the video. Leave me a link. I would love to see it. You guys, you know, I'm obsessed with YouTube. I love watching YouTube just as much as I like to create the content. So it's a good time. Anyway, if you are new to my channel, my name is Karen Harris. Welcome. I do upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me, and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. I can't remember the last time I missed an upload, which is pretty awesome. I've definitely been doing the every other day thing for a while now. Almost a year? Maybe? Maybe not a year. But we're getting there, so that's pretty exciting. But today, I want to film the Makeup Mess tag. Now, this was created by... I don't know who it was created by. I will find out and leave the original video down in the description box. It's an awesome tag. I'm excited to do it. So I'm going to stop blabbering and get into it. Okay, guys. First question. How often do you wash your makeup brushes and sponges? Now, I have blessed myself with a lot of makeup brushes because I do hate washing my brushes. So... I've accumulated a good stash of brushes so I can go quite a bit without washing my brushes because I have new ones that I can grab for so usually not very often but obviously I'm using almost a clean brush every time and then with sponges sometimes I can go a couple of days without washing them because I do feel like washing them every day does cause wear and tear which isn't the hugest deal when it comes to your skin, but I'm also only using it on myself, so I'm not super worried. If I am doing makeup on somebody, like a friend, usually I will just use all clean tools. Getting somebody infected with something is the fastest way for you to go downhill, so I always make sure I'm using clean tools on other people. The second question is, how do you organize your makeup collection? So I've talked about this before, but I used to have a regular writing desk that I found at a thrift store as my main desk for my makeup, but my birthday was in December and it was Christmas time and I had really wanted to, you know, focus on YouTube and make it a really, you know, hobby and invest and do a, like a, have a better setup in my beauty room. So for Christmas, I asked for the Alex drawers, and I ended up getting two nine drawers, a tabletop, and two of the five drawers, and it's amazing. It's honestly just the easiest way to organize your makeup. I know some people want something more unique. I just think makeup storage and vanities are very, very expensive. Dressers are very expensive. Furniture in general is very expensive. So the Alex drawers is really the best way. They are... The perfect size, there are so many acrylic organizers for them now, so it really makes it easy to store your makeup, and I can't say enough good things about the Alex system. I know it's very basic, but if you really, really want to be more unique, you can always like do a cool DIY and like paint it a different color. I personally like white. It is nice and clean, um, really streamlined, and yeah, it has so much space. I'm so happy for choosing this system because it really helps me keep my makeup organized. Number three, do you put your makeup products away after you are done using them or leave them out for tomorrow? I would say a little bit of both. I usually don't have time in the morning, so I'll do my makeup and everything is pretty much like on this table behind me, which wasn't a big deal when I used to film in front of my bookshelf, which is over there in this room. But now I film in front of my vanity, so I have to make sure there's no, like, huge disaster behind me, which is kind of a pain in the ass. I do miss sometimes being able to film in front of my bookcase because it was easy, you know, it was, like, already set up so I didn't have to bother cleaning it. 
which was really awesome. But yeah, I do make a huge mess in here when I'm getting ready. Also, like, sometimes I hoard boxes, especially if I'm, like, putting things on Poshmark because I just reuse the cardboard from my previous order. So it can get pretty crazy in here. Makeup everywhere. I'm trying to get better at cleaning up after myself. But really, with the time I have in the morning, it's it's pretty much impossible to put all my makeup away in time to get out the door. Loose or pressed powders. Gosh, that's a tough one. I do like pressed because it's less messy and I feel like I'm not wasting as much product. I think loose is amazing for when you want to do some heavy baking and things like that. I'm not really into baking and I've tried a few different loose powders but I must say I do prefer pressed just because it's easier for me to handle. Number five, do you ever fall asleep without taking your makeup off? Now, I didn't ever used to wear makeup as a kid. I pretty much only started make wearing makeup when I moved to the United States, which was when I was about 18. And I don't think I've ever like on purpose fallen asleep with my makeup on. If I was like traveling or if I was taking a little cat nap between like doing something and not doing something, then I might have like tried to sleep without pressing my face against a pillow. But usually at the end of the day, all the makeup comes off. And it's kind of like a spiritual moment for me. It really is like my quiet time where I take a shower, make sure I take my makeup off. Then I come down to this room, which is in our basement, do all my skincare. And no matter how tired I am, I will always at least make sure I use a wipe on my face because it's so bad for your skin. I had a friend who is beautiful, would just always party and never take her makeup off. And her skin was just like reacting so badly to it. Yeah, I would never recommend keeping your makeup on. It's just not worth it. And especially while you're young, it's gonna be fine. But when you're getting older and you're doing that to your skin, I mean, it's just gonna wreck it. So number one pro tip for good makeup application is to make sure you're not sleeping with your makeup on, not clogging those pores, keep that skin in pristine shape and your makeup game will improve 1000%. I can guarantee you that. Number seven, will you use a product even if it is cracked or broken? That's a tough one because I don't usually break a lot of my products. Probably because I don't pan a lot of my products for them to break. I feel like if I broke a product, it would really just depend on how badly. I recently got one of the Huda palettes and it came completely shattered, but Sephora replaced it for me. So now I have one that's in really good shape. So I don't know how to answer that. I'd probably just say no, but I don't mean to sound snotty. I just, I honestly don't know what I would do if I broke a palette or a powder product. I guess it would depend on how much it is and if I can get it replaced. <laughs> is that a good answer? Number eight, do you wait to pan a product completely before you replace it? Um, I used to do that. I talked about that in my YouTube goals and makeup goals of like, I need to use up more of my stuff. So I used to do that. Obviously, I think everyone used to do that before YouTube got so big. Now I feel like I'm never going to get through half the shit I have, but I'm trying. So I used to, but not so much anymore. How often do you declutter makeup? Um, I don't declutter very often. If it's something I'm not using, I will try and give it to a friend or sell it or, you know, do something with it because I don't want to be wasteful. That is not my intention ever with things. So if it's something that doesn't suit my skin, something I regret buying, I'll, I'll do one of those things, give it away, sell it. Sometimes I'll put it in my kit. I do have a makeup kit because every once in a while I will do people's makeup like friends or friends, kids that are going to prom or something like that. So that's fun too. That's a good way for me to use up some of my extra product. But yeah, I don't declutter that often. I think decluttering is amazing. It works for some people. It doesn't work for others. There's a huge declutter like community slash like trend in YouTube right now. And I see both sides of it. But for me personally, it's like I buy all this makeup. It's not sent to me. So I declutter when I want to. Not because I have to. It's definitely not like something where I'm going to film a video and be like, I have to get rid of half of my eyeshadow collection. Like, no, that's just not me. If people want to do it, that's their prerogative. You know what I mean? Number 12. 
Do you use your fingers to apply makeup? Not all the time. I honestly kind of wish sometimes I used my fingers more, especially when it came to concealer. Sometimes I have a hard time blending some concealers, so I think it is nicer when you have the warmth of your fingers, but in general, I'm not a huge fan of using my fingers, but if it was in a pinch, yes, and also I use my fingers to put on glitter glue and then pack on the eyeshadow. It's just easy because glitter glue on eyeshadow brushes is just a pain in the ass to clean, so I do use my fingers for that. Number 13, what products, if any, do you hoard in your purse, bag, or backpack? Recently, we did top five products in our handbag for Top 5 Tuesday. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, so follow me on Instagram so you know what I'm talking about. And I honestly don't carry a lot of makeup with me. If anything, I'll just put the one lipstick that I'm gonna wear in my purse, but I'm so paranoid that I'll lose things as the day goes on, so I don't like to hoard like products in my purse. Also, I live in a very cold climate, so I get really like worried about leaving stuff in my car. Like if I forget and leave makeup in the car, I don't know if it's gonna like ruin the makeup or if it's really hot. I've had lipsticks like melt in my car, so for the most part, I really try to avoid traveling with makeup, so that one's a little bit tough for me to answer, so hopefully that helped. Number 14, what is your least favorite step in your makeup routine? My least favorite step in my makeup routine is having to wet my sponge. I do love using a makeup sponge to blend my foundation, but since I do all my makeup in this room, there is a bathroom like literally like out the door, but I hate having to get up and go wet my sponge and come back here. So Usually I do my eyes first and then go do my foundation and then I have to come back in here to do all my face products. So these are really my first world problems, but it's such a pain in the ass to have to get up and go wet your sponge. Like, can somebody invent something for that? Like, is it weird if I just had like a bowl to dunk my sponge in? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. Number 15, what is your worst makeup memory? Okay, so I don't know if this counts as like the worst like makeup wise but I got married almost two years ago we had our wedding and I decided I was gonna do my own wedding makeup which was fine in my brain except I think like I didn't realize how stressful my wedding day was gonna be I think like I don't have a lot of experience with weddings like I'm an only child I've never like really been in a lot of weddings and the time goes by so incredibly fast. It was just so stressful. Like, I tried to do a wing, my wing kept fucking up, so I had to have a friend do my wing, and I'm like, ooh, like, this is my wedding day. Like, I don't want somebody else to do my makeup. And then, like, I had fake nails, and I got the um, stiletto-type nails, and I couldn't, like, hold my lashes and glue my lashes on, so I had to have somebody else do that and it was just a nightmare like it was so stressful and it's so funny because I do makeup on the side for people and I'm not even like saying this like to promote myself but if you can do yourself a favor on your wedding day no matter how good you are with makeup hire somebody to do your makeup and hire somebody to do your hair because if you have a wedding day like I did Everything that can go wrong will go wrong and it's just gonna stress you out It's so much nicer to just have somebody do everything for you or just make sure you have really solid like What are those people called personal attendants or like solid bridesmaids that'll do everything else that needs to be done like I remember on my wedding day I was standing there and I had my dress on and I could not bend to get my shoes on and my mom had to put my shoes on for me. So these are like things you don't think about until you are in that position. So that was just a hot mess of a day for me. It was just really stressed me out. I didn't have like a little clutch to put like my lipstick and stuff in. So luckily my makeup like held on through photos because I didn't touch up my makeup at all during my wedding. <laughs> And thank the Lord, like it all worked out. But yeah, that was that was pretty traumatizing for being somebody that loves makeup as much as I do. Like I really, I really wish I had been better prepared. So yeah, hopefully that counts as the worst makeup memory. 
Okay guys, that is everything for my makeup mess tag video. Thank you Kat so much for tagging me. Like I said in the intro, I'm gonna leave everyone I'm tagging down below. And if you are a YouTube creator and you haven't filmed this video yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, girl. You might as well get to it. And thank you for watching this, guys. I will catch you on the next video. Bye.